A beautiful 14-year-old Melbourne girl looks into the eyes of her mum and whispers words that would break any parent's heart. I'm not going to make it. And Alicia Hussein was right. A short time later, she died. But she shouldn't have. Alicia is a victim of a terrifying crisis in Victoria's triple zero emergency service. When it's busy, phones are simply not being answered in time. Callers are supposed to be connected within five seconds, but some are waiting 15 minutes or longer for help. And like Alicia, they're dying. In this joint 60 Minutes, The Age and Sydney Morning Herald investigation, we reveal a scandal that must be fixed now. In a suburban home in Melbourne's north, a family tragedy is unfolding. She was talking and out of nowhere she just said, I can't breathe. Alicia Hussein is having an asthma attack, but the remedy her mum Jasmine normally relies on, Ventolin and a nebulizer, isn't working. Usually the puffer is enough. She just takes, you know, a few, a couple of puffs and she's usually fine. But we've done everything and I go, nah. And so I call the ambulance straight away. Emergency police, fire or ambulance. Ambulance. That's ambulance ringing out now, please wait. Yeah, thank you. It's just gone blue. Yeah. I'll see how long it's gonna take. When we call triple zero in an emergency, we expect there will be someone there to pick up and assist. But as Alicia struggled to stay alive, fighting for breath, her mother was put on hold with a Telstra operator. She knows in Victoria, she should be put through to an ambulance call taker within five seconds. This is the actual audio of her triple zero phone call. Ambulance still ringing. She, I don't know, maybe if the driver is going to be quicker. I, I, I would have no way of predicting that for you, I'm sorry. But the she, she's not going to probably here. make it. One minute became two. Still connecting. She's she, 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 she dying. Then five. <laughs> still connecting to ambulance. Then ten. Ambulance still ringing out. 15 agonising minutes passed before Jasmine finally heard the voice of a triple zero call taker. As soon as I rang up, told the operator, I said, she's not, she's not breathing properly. I said, she's not going to make it. The triple zero system in Victoria is broken, with thousands of people waiting minutes, not the promised five seconds, to have their emergency calls picked up. It doesn't get any worse than the case of 14-year-old Alicia Hussein. <laughs> okay. She'd have an answer for everything, so and if you say something wrong, she will correct it. She was the smartest girl in my house. She wanted to be a magistrate right from probably around 10. It was the 27th of October when Alicia had her asthma attack. Her sister, Alina, remembers her condition deteriorating in an instant. She kept saying that she, she wasn't going to make it, she was going to die and everything. Her mum, Jasmine, did what any Australian would do. She called triple zero. That's ambulance ringing out now, please wait. Thank you. Across Australia, the calls are first answered by Telstra, who then patched them through to the triple zero agency. In Victoria, it's called the Emergency Services Telecommunications Authority, known as ESTA. She's saying, sorry, I'll try another line. And sorry, I'll try, try another line. And it'd just ring out. It'd just keep ringing out. Tell me about those, those seconds and then those minutes ticking away as you're waiting on the phone. I said to my husband, the ambulance is not picking up. And um, Alicia just... One of the last things um, she did say was, I'm not going to make it anyway. And I knew if I don't do something, she's going to go. No, let's go, let's go. All right, let's just put it in the car, put it in the car. It just felt like it was just taking forever. On hold with Telstra because there weren't enough staff at ESTA to answer their call, Jasmine and Alina took drastic action, turning the back seat of their car into a makeshift ambulance. 
And then I started CPR and I, once I got from my house to the street where the hospital is, um, she, she had no pulse, nothing. And I knew that this, she's not, she's not gonna make it. Still connecting to ambulance. Mum Jasmine is trying to keep her daughter alive when they reach the hospital. By that time, even the Telstra operator sounds frustrated by the delay. 15 minutes. As soon as they got in there, they um, worked on her for over an hour. It was only once they were inside the hospital that the triple zero call taker finally picked up. Emergency services, 2050811. Caller is still there. They've, something about the person's turning blue. I think they've driven her to hospital and they're at the emergency room now. Can I leave it with you? Certainly. What was meant to have taken five seconds had taken 15 minutes. Alicia was declared dead an hour later. She didn't need to die that night. It's, she just, she needed the ambulance there and that would have been enough to save it. Even within that five minutes, I'm not even saying four minutes, I'm saying even five, even 10 minutes, she would still be here today, but she's not. I had to get out of the room because I didn't want to hear, I didn't want to hear that she's gone. But um, the Alicia I knew and the Alicia on the table was two different things. <laughs> it didn't even look like her anymore. The Andrews government has been on notice now for years about the failing triple zero service. They've promised to fix it, but the Premier didn't want to sit down and talk to us. So we took it to the boss of Esther. You can confirm our leg data, at least 10 deaths, where it looks like an Esther call answering delay may well have contributed to that death. These grainy photos and videos are cherished memories for the Hussein family. <laughs> but they're also a potent reminder of what's missing. Everything I look at now, it's like before her death, I had everything. And even though there's just one missing, it's a, it's a big thing. I had dreams like every other parent. And I, I had dreams of her future. But now I don't get any of that with her. That is not, it's not right. 14 year old Alicia Hussein died of an asthma attack after her mother, Jasmine, spent 15 minutes waiting for Victoria's triple zero service, Esther, to pick up. You're speaking out about something so, so personal, and that's still obviously causing you so much hurt. But you said you're angry. Yeah. So why are you speaking out? Because I don't want, well, I'm going through what my family go through. I don't want anyone else to lose, whether it be a child, a parent, anyone. Sadly, we can reveal this is far from an isolated case of delay. In January this year, Andrew O'Brien was sleeping in his kid's bedroom after his wife went to bed early, feeling unwell. He suspected she had COVID. For some reason, I woke up and I thought I'd just walk upstairs and check George. And it's really unlike me to sort of do that. And I tapped her leg, I said, you okay, you okay? And I, and I got no response. So I flicked the light on and then I see that horror story unfold in front of me. Andrew's wife, Georgie, was unconscious and barely breathing. Her airways were blocked because she'd, had, she'd bitten down on her lip. She'd thrown her head back on the pillow and she had vomit and mucus in her throat. So she wasn't, she wasn't breathing. Andrew immediately dials triple zero. And no one's picking it up, and it's being picked up by a Telstra operator. This is the audio of his triple zero phone call. Emergency police fireplace. Ambulance, please, ambulance, urgently. Two minutes pass. We'll keep trying. You can hear Georgie struggling to breathe in the background. They're receiving a high level of calls tonight, sir, but they will answer. I understand, but my wife. I understand. 
We'll keep trying. Please hurry, man. Please hurry. This is insane. All I'm thinking is I'm going to have to lift George, carry her downstairs, put her in a car and drive her. Not knowing what the next step is, is where the time st stands still. And that's the difficulty. Oh, is there any, any other way? Can I take you to hospital? What's going on, man? No, it's, it's really up to you, so if you want to take her. But I, I, I'm, 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 I'm 40 minutes trying. away. Andrew lives on a farm near Dalesford in regional Victoria, 60 k's from the nearest hospital. He should only have had to wait five seconds for an Esther operator to pick up. But it takes at least five minutes. Thanks, Chelsea. Go ahead, call her. What address do you need the ambulance? And I'm just asking them, give me a time. I need a time. You need to give me a time so I can make a decision about what I do next. And they just couldn't give me a time. Was there ever a moment in your mind where you thought, I've lost George? Absolutely. I didn't think George was making it. It's almost three hours before Georgie finally reaches a hospital. Anyway, so Friday. So Friday, what? they rang me, yeah. all confirmed. Miraculously, Georgie survived the delay. Her husband Andrew is relieved, but fearful of the next time his family needs to call triple zero. When you require an ambulance, you require them to get there to help you. And when it's let down like that, you, of course, you, you're devastated because you know that this will happen to someone else. It's only a matter of time, you know. In your mind, who should be held to account for this failure? The responsibility lies with the executives, the CEOs and the state government whose charge and responsibility is, is to provide that critical acute care as quickly as possible. And if they're not doing it, they've abrogated their responsibility to us as, you know, as citizens of Victoria. There's no doubting the professionalism and dedication of the frontline workers who pick up the calls here at the Emergency Services Telecommunications Authority, or ESTA. I've spoken to some of ESTA's call takers. They're not allowed to comment publicly, but confidentially they've admitted that at times ESTA is dangerously understaffed and their fears are backed up by these damning leg documents, which reveal that in the last six months, at least 10 Victorians have died while waiting for Esther to answer their calls for help. Stephen Lean is the interim CEO of Esther. After sitting on its board for 12 months, he was brought in to clean up a broken system. You can confirm at least 10 deaths where it looks like an Esther call answering delay may well have contributed to that death. Uh, had the call been picked up within the required time frame, someone's life would have been saved, at least 10, possibly 14, just in the last couple of months. There's, there's at least 10 notifications of possible adverse outcomes from uh, call delays. Um, they're not 10 conclusions, Und they're understand. 10 suspect cases, yeah. yes. You acknowledge it's a, it's a big number. Oh, yeah, it's a big number. Internal documents leaked to us show just how bad it is. As recently as late January, the agency was overrun, with more than a 1,000 calls on some days taking at least two minutes rather than five seconds to be answered. Why are so many calls not getting picked up within your required five-second time frame? Ah, well, Nick, it, it's, a, it's an easy question. It's a really difficult answer, but essentially, the, the fundamental is enough call takers to take the calls. Coming up to speed and building the capability and the capacity to answer that call just doesn't happen overnight. It's not an issue that, that Esther has been sitting on or hiding. Respectfully, we wouldn't know about this unless we had been leaked the data from inside your agency. It's a big, big problem, isn't it? Oh, it's a challenge. We've had some real trouble trying to deliver on the expectations of community. Uh, and we went through some really difficult patches through the late 2021. We still haven't worked our way through it. It will take Esther 18 months to two years to get to where I think it needs to be and most likely where Victorians will agree where it needs to be. It's clear there will be more delays and likely more deaths until Esther is properly resourced to answer surges in calls. Across Australia, fatal triple zero delays are not new. But right now, Victoria clearly has the worst system. 
having the worst emergency response system in the country should come as no surprise to the Andrews government. There's been at least five years of warnings that ESTA is unable to cope with surges in demand. And even when the problem worsened during the COVID-19 pandemic, not enough was done to fix it. It's a pretty big failing, isn't it? Isn't that the most obvious thing, getting the forecasting right? Do we have enough staff to handle triple zero calls many months into a pandemic? I think in hindsight, it's obvious. You didn't forecast what was going to happen. Uh, and then when it arrives outside what you forecast, then where ESTA is at the moment, um, you're struggling to meet demand. Who is responsible for that failure to get more people, more resources and a better ESTA in Victoria? Well, uh, look, Nick, I I'm not in a position to dwell on reflecting too far back as who's accountable and who's responsible. Why, why not? People have lost their lives. It, shouldn't we be asking these questions given Victorians have lost their lives? No, I, I think they're important questions, but... but but where my focus at, at the moment is to, to get Esther to where it needs to be. What's your promise to people like Jasmine, who lost her daughter? These people could have been saved had there not been triple zero delays. What's your promise to them about how you're going to fix the system? We have to get on and make sure that no other families are affected and, and to limit the number of families who might be affected by the delays that are there in the system and to ensure from my perspective and and for the executives of ESTA and 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 I think for government, my advice to government is that we need to build ESTA into a place where this doesn't happen again. In a studio he built for himself at the entrance to his farm, renowned artist Andrew O'Brien is trying to forget the night his wife nearly died. I lose myself in, in the work. You lose yourself in what you're doing for that briefest of moments um, and there's a beauty in that. When you put down the paintbrush, does it flood back? Of course, and it's consistent. So painting is the is a escape for that, which is great. After three hours of delay, when Georgie was finally in a hospital bed, doctors found a brain tumour. I'm going to pick a card too. The family are preparing themselves for another battle and wishing for no more delays. You've saved your wife's life once. Does that give you some reservoir of hope that you'll get through this next chapter? Oh, completely. Oh, we, we know we're getting through it. And we'll just keep doing what we have to do in order to, for George to, you know, have the best possible outcome from the surgery and her ongoing health. That part. The call to action is now. A call to action to the government is now to fix this. Because if, if a legacy of what happened with us and what happens with George in the future is that people get to together and they improve the delivery of emergency care into rural communities across Australia, we'd be delighted. All the photos of her and... She looks like her sister. Yeah. In Melbourne, the Hussein family have a lifetime to agonise about what could have been done to save their little girl. They don't want another family let down by fatal delays. I go to bed every night and I go over the whole, that whole one hour, one and a half hours maybe even. Um, I go over what I could have done differently, what I, what I should have done. Why did I call the ambulance? Why didn't I just take it to the hospital myself? I would have been there much quicker. Um, yeah, you, you go over this and I don't know how long it's going to be like that, but it is. The Hussein family, like many others, do not deserve what they've been through. But the Andrews government has finally listened. In response to the failings we've uncovered, they've just told us they're spending an additional $115 million to pay for 120 new staff at ESTA. Albeit late, it's a significant and welcome announcement. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.